Hi, hello, welcome to Nicolette Reads. I'm Nicolette, I read. Okay, so I know it's been a couple of weeks since I've posted a video, but listen, I moved physically from one location to another location with both my body and everything that I own. And so the last couple of weeks have been a little hectic, but we are in now and we've built this beautiful office. I took some footage of that, so I'll do something with it, hopefully soon. We're just gonna revel in this excitement because in my old place, it was just an apartment, and my bookshelves were just like living room decor. Now I have an entire dedicated office. It's a whole vibe. It's like 72% of the way done right now. And when it's done, I'll be sure to take some more footage of that. But since I moved, I didn't have a bunch of time to film all of the unboxing of all the bookish mail for the July book boxes, etc that I have received in the mail. And so I'm going to just do them all for you now. Disclaimer though, I think I'm missing the Fairy Loot monthly box because I anticipated the shipping date being later. So actually Fairy Loot did a, a better job than I gave them credit for. They delivered the box like more on time than I anticipated. And so I assumed I would be in the new place already. I wasn't, it got delivered here. I don't really know what happened. I'll figure that out. And if I ever do locate it, then I'll show you guys what's inside of it. But what we do have going on today is the Illumicrate monthly box, as well as Owl Crate and Owl Crate's new fantasy adult book only box. And then some special edition fairy loot orders that I ordered a long time ago. The special editions take a while, so we've got a couple of those, as well as the new Brandon Sanderson secret project that came out recently. So let's just get started, eh? I have been waiting so long to open these. They've just been accumulating and then I had to take them physically from the other place to this place. So it's like mega Christmas right now. I have six things to open. I don't even know where to start. Okay, so I think we're gonna start with Brandon Sanderson. So this unfortunately is just a regular package because when I went to go order the new Secret Project book, somehow I missed the boat on ordering the premium fan bundle and those were all sold out by the time I got there. So instead I just got the regular uh, premium leather bound hardcover special edition, which is fine, but I just made a video showing you guys how cool the premium fan bundle boxes are and I missed out on the Kickstarter and now apparently I missed out on Secret Project 3 premium fan bundle. So I believe the pin in that box is Shallan. So depending on how you feel about Shallan as a character, you might be really sad if you missed out on that. I feel okay about it. Scissor cam. I was a little scared I wasn't gonna be able to find my scissors because some of the boxes are not unboxed yet. I also struggled because I couldn't remember which boxes had all the different camera equipment in it. So, you know, life's a struggle. And so you just have to buy books to get through it. Okay. The first thing that is on top are some stickers. And then here is the book itself. It is within this cardboard and then also in a plastic wrap for extra protection. Okay, so it is called Yumi and the Nightmare Painter. It is the illustrated leather bound special edition. And on the back it says, a person is more than their experiences stacked up like stones. Our best moments are the foundations we use to reach for the sky. Wow. And then our end papers here are some really cool sumie art, which is a Japanese style ink painting art. Ooh! With some character art here in the other end papers. I realized in my last one I forgot to show you guys the inside of the book, so I'm doing my due diligence this time. As with all the other Secret Project books, I have no idea what this one's about, and I'm not gonna read the synopsis and, or look it up for you guys because I like to go into the Secret Projects as blind as possible. The cool thing about these is that not only do they have these special covers and end papers, but they also have full page illustrations inside throughout the book. So this first one I don't think is a spoiler, so I'm just a good example. This is the first illustration but they're so beautiful so this is very exciting i there's only one more secret project left that makes me happy and sad i'm excited that we're going to have all of them it makes me sad that i won't be getting more you know what i mean they're just so pretty and i love these standalone fantasies that brandon has been putting out so look forward to reading that okay up next i think we're gonna do a luma crate so i actually 
for the first time got one of the Illumicrate boxes that actually says Illumicrate on the outside. I somehow always end up with just plain yellow boxes. Um, so I'm feeling really special about this one that I get the actual Illumicrate box. So this month's theme for July 2023 is you win or you die. Boom. So the first thing, what is this? On top is an Illumicrate Guess the Character card game. And it has two sets of 20 character cards, 20 mystery cards. Ask questions to guess your opponent's mystery character before they guess yours. Okay, well that's really fun. I don't know if it's like preset character options, but I think it would be fun if it was like 20 questions where you have to come up with a character in your brain and then the cards are questions about the character and you just have to know what each other have seen or what characters you're familiar with, you know? So I feel like if you're playing with your friends, you know what books your friends have read, etc. Um, otherwise, if it's just like popular characters from popular books, that would work too. I love games and I love book games and so the problem is you can't play with people that don't read, but that's okay. This is why we are friends. The next thing, I was scared this was another pillowcase. We've been getting a lot of pillowcases lately and I don't have loose pillows that need pillowcases, but it's not, it's a towel. It says fire is catching towel inspired by the Hunger Games. Well, that's fun. It's probably because the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes movie comes out in November, which I guess is almost coming soon. Mm, don't say that. How doth one open? The garbage is a, it's a later Nicolette problem. It's not a right now Nicolette problem. So the artwork is by Kelly Chong. Big toe. I mean, it's pretty. I wouldn't know right away that it's Hunger Games if I didn't, you know, wasn't told. But like, it goes like this. I don't dislike it. It's just like not the highest quality material. It's not like the softest thing in the world. It's always nice to have an extra towel around and the colors are pretty, so I'll give it a B minus. I almost wish it was a blanket, but it's not soft enough to even pretend to be one, so. Okay, the next item in here is in this really pretty box. It just says Illumicrate Crate on the top. So these look like little teacups, perchance. Wow, pretty. So it's a set of these small teacups. And I believe in Asian cultures, teacups often don't have handles. So this makes sense to me. So there's two and they're so pretty. Oh, I love, oh, and they're kind of different colors too. How cute. This one's more pink. I don't know if the camera's picking it up a little bit. It's more like peachy. This one's more like cream. Also me and a cricket or grasshopper or somebody are fighting. They're outside this window from of my office and uh, we're just gonna either pretend it's not there or sing along with it. Or maybe if I make a bad joke, we'll just listen to the cricket instead. <laughs> if you're not a big tea person, uh, you could also put like a tea light in here. Maybe that's why they're called that. But I think these are really nice. I'm getting an Asian vibe. Okay, the next item in here. And it's just, it's like a felt pouch and it has a book with a flame on it. I'm not really sure what you would do with this. The inside is like silky or satin or whatever. I don't know what it's inspired by and I don't know what you do with it, but maybe you could put your game in there. And now your, your book game is in a, a book pouch. Ta-da. Almost looks like a present now. Could be a good present bag, especially for somebody who likes books. I think the last item in here is the book. So here we have the Jassad Air. It is in plastic, so let's get that off really quick. Okay. Here is the book and the back says, get ready for an unmissable tale of shattered kingdoms, forbidden magic and cunning royals in Sarah Hashem's Egyptian inspired epic fantasy debut. At 10 years old, the heir of Jassad fled a massacre that consumed her entire family. At 15, she buried her first body. At 20, her carefully crafted lies are starting to crumble. So it does, I think it looks pretty similar to the original cover, but we have this nice gold foiling moment happening. And then on the edges, we have this geometric pattern that goes all the way around. Okay, and then there isn't anything on the reverse jacket. It's just blank, but that's okay because check this out. 
It's like a fabric-y almost wallpapery. I don't really know what you would call the this texture, but it's shiny and then it has all these black details on it. Really pretty. And then instead of the title on the spine, it says every truth has its time. So that's a cool embellishment with nothing on the back. So very pretty naked book and I like that the spine is ambiguous. So pretty. Okay, the end pages are more of the geometric design that we have going on, you know, on the edge. Same on the back. And then it is pen signed by the author. So I love a good pen signed book. Give me all the pen signed books. Give me none of the digitally signed books. Oh, and it appears it's going to be part of a series because it says it is book one. So the more you know. There is a letter from the author in the front, but it doesn't say whether or not it's exclusive to Illumicrate or not, or if it's just a letter that the author put on in here, um, in all the versions, I have no idea. So, so the book is approximately 480 pages and the font is relatively big. There's so, I mean, I feel like you could probably do this in two or three sittings, you know, if you're feeling really motivated. I'm really excited to read this book. I think I'm actually going to be reading it soon, AKA most likely this month, hopefully. If I can get the rest of my house unpacked, then I can have more time to read. As far as the special edition-ness of this book goes, I really like the Naked book. I think it's really pretty and I really appreciate when Naked books are pretty because that's how I see it most of the time because that's how I read it. So I am pleased. I do like the cover. I wish it was a little different than the original cover, which is, can go here. And just because I feel like it's a really cool design, but it had potential to do something even more completely different especially since it's an Egyptian themed book, which is unique in this day and age where we haven't really gotten a lot of those yet. So I felt like we could have gone with something more, you know, there aren't cliches yet. So we could have done something else, but I do really like this cover. And so I'm pleased with it. The edges are just geometric, which are fine. But that naked, that naked book though. Okay, and that's all the items. Let's just do a quick recap here. So we have the Hunger Games towel designed by Kelly Chong. We have the Guess the Character card game, uh, artwork by Poe, and designed by Jane Tibbetts. It says it's our take on Guess Who. This card game features stunning artwork with many of our all-time favorite characters. So it is pre preset characters. That's fun. Plus, who doesn't love Guess Who? Um, aromatic Magic Stemless Tea Cups designed by Jessica Lee Lay, an item we have never included before. These stemless tea cups inspired by a magic steeped in poison are perfect for all your tea drinking. And then we have a Guild of Knowledge embroidered pouch designed by Alice Maria Power. Keep your tarot or playing cards safe with this embroidered pouch inspired by the final stripe. Okay, great, so I was right. You could put your little cards in there, call it a day. It's cute. Never read the final strife, the pouch is just okay. And then next month's theme is hidden magic. Well, isn't that just the bee's knees? Great, so all things considered, I have been getting into tea a lot recently, so I'm, I really actually do love the teacups. They're actually, they feel like a nice quality and they're cute. So I think that's my favorite item. Oh, unless the guessing card game is really fun, then maybe that's my favorite item. I, this is, fine. It is kind of nice to have uh, some pouch to like keep your cards in so I get that. It's kind of a cool design but it like it's actually physically embroidered in it but it just is like it's okay. I like it. I don't love it. The towel also fine and the book itself I enjoy that it's pretty but it's already pretty to start so they really would have had to try hard to mess it up. So that's that for the July 2023 Illumicrate box. Now let's move on to the Owl Crate box. So up next we're gonna do Owl Crate. We have here the regular uh, subscription box, not the book only and not the adult book only, just regular subscription. So let's crack into it. Okay, so sneak peek inside the box, ker chow. So the theme this month is Break the Curse. Ba -ba. And we're gonna start off strong with our Treasured Tomes enamel pin. So this is the seventh out of 12 of their collection because they do one every month starting at the beginning of the year. This is based on Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik. 
and on the inside it says, In the mirror I had become a queen in a dark forest made of ice. So it sounds like it's a Sleeping Beauty retelling. I honestly, I haven't read Spinning Silver, but it's kind of giving winter vibes. So I've been trying to figure out what sort of wintry books I'd like to read uh, as the seasons change later this year and maybe I'll give that a go. Um, let me know if you guys have read this book and then I will think about it. The next item in here is a canvas item. Oh, this is all wrapped up right now, but I can already tell that it's inspired by Howl's Moving Castle. And I love that. Oh, it's got a carabiner. What is it? What are you? Tell me your secrets. Oh God, is this gonna be another picnic blanket situation? I don't know if I can handle that. Oh, it's a bag. I was like, is this a bib? It's like a reusable grocery bag or whatever. I guess you could take it to a bookstore too, but it's giving more grocery bag vibes. And it's Sophie and Howl from Howl's Moving Castle. And I love Howl's Moving Castle. I keep trying to tell myself to become a person that uses reusable grocery bags and I'm not that person yet. But maybe this will help me on my journey. I love Howl's Moving Castle. I don't love the item. I wish it was like actual canvas and not this like vinyl maybe material. Also it was so confusing to get open. I felt like I was gonna break it, but it's never going back in there. But it could if you were if you were more skilled at life than I am, then you could fold it right back up and then hang it on like the side of something. Put it in your car as like your reusable bag, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. Send help. Cute! Okay, the next item in here is in one of their iconic flat cardboard boxes. What in tarnation? Why is everything so difficult to open for some, whoa. <gasps> okay, I love it. So this is a sun catcher. It has this jewel on the end that you put it somewhere where the sun can hit it and then it'll refract the light. So it kind of gives a rainbow effect on the wall and it has a sun and moon and the moon says, my curse, my ruin. And so you just like hang it somewhere and let the sun hit it with all of its shining glory. I love these, they're so pretty. I can't wait to try and figure out where in my house we're gonna put this, maybe the kitchen or maybe somewhere where the sun comes in. What way does the sun rise? In the west. East. Which way does my house face? I do not know the answers to these questions, but really cute. I actually really like this a lot. You know what this would have gone really well with is the sun and the moon themed box, night and day themed box from who was that? Alden McCrate? That was a choice. Okay, the next item is in this purple box. Case yet? And it looks like a highlighter. Our fairy tale highlighter set inspired by The Wrath and the Dawn, Six Crimson Reigns, and To Kill a Kingdom is the best set to have for highlighting and annotating your favorite bookish quotes while you traverse into marvelous and inspiring stories. Each highlighter color matches the three books and features a quote from each book that embodies the magic and light of fairy tale retellings designed with love by Yatsman Shiropa at the dot pearled reader. Okay, oh, there's three high... Big brain. Okay, these are cute. So we have three highlighters and it's just like they said. There's a quote on each one of them. They come in these colors. This one says, after all, every story has a story. This one says, find the light that makes your lantern shine. I don't even know if you guys can see that. Love and madness are two stars in the same sky. Cute. And it looks like we'll have a chisel tip and a fine tip. Yep, so here's the chisel tip. And there's the fine tip. Nice! I recently started getting into annotating and then I'm kind of backtracking a little bit because I feel bad writing in all these fancy books. So I've got some transparent sticky notes and I'm gonna start writing in them and then sticking the sticky notes inside of the book so that later I can take them out if someone wants to borrow them or if I want to get rid of the book or whatever. Um, I'll just write what page the 
sticky notes go to on them. And I think that's going to be a good compromise for me. Because since I started annotating, now whenever I have a thought, I'm like, well, I have to write it in the book, obviously. So I actually really like these. Off to a great start. Okay, the next item is like a book, but not the book. It looks like a journal. Oh, oh. Okay, so we have a blank lined journal and it's like that puffy kind of material. And it says how to live forever. And then the back says, what is a person if not the marks they leave behind? Interesting. And it's actually, you can tell it's like a refillable notebook. So if it gets full, you can take it out and use this again. And then the rest of the pages are lined and have these cute flowers on them. And it has a ribbon bookmark, which everyone loves. And then also the leather pouch here has one of the uh, pen holders, you know? So I actually really like this item. I think that's really great. And it's really fun to hold because it's really squishy. I thought this was the book and I was like, homie, that's so tiny, but it's not, it's a journal. I love it. Okay, and here's why I was confused is because it looks a little bit like the book <laughs> that we got. So here's the book. It's Garden of the Cursed by Katie Rose Poole. Pretty, so it's this gorgeous, purple color and with a lot of foiling. I feel like we've been really having like a lot of foiled moments on books recently and I don't know if we need to have as much foil as we are really leaning into it recently. Like this is really pretty but it's also just like so much foil. And then on the back it says secrets can't protect me only the truth can. Our edges here are sprayed purple. They look almost a little indigo on camera but they're they're like violet, blue violet in real life. Ooh, <gasps> whoa, whoa, there's a lot going on. So we have a full art print on the back here and it's all character art. And I don't know who any of these people are, but I really love how big it is. We got some like kissing fairies or something going on over here. The fashion is outrageous. So I'm almost glad I like when Especially something that looks like short like this. If they're gonna describe outrageous fashion choices, then sure, give me a reference photo, you know? Give me a ref- look at this gown that she's wearing. I want to know more about that. Like, what is that? I'm intrigued. And then, the book itself doesn't even say that it's this book. It says that it's a grimoire by the sorcerer Ilario. We have the spine. And then on the back it says, I fear if I'm not careful, you'll steal my heart too. The Ballad of the Moon Thief. What does it mean? What does any of it mean? Okay, and then we have different character art on the end pages. Different style, so I'm assuming different artist. Look at these two, he looks so broody. And she looks like she isn't gonna take his shit. How much fun. Hey, so we it's pen signed and it's got the Owlcrate reader note printed inside of the book. Look at that. I mean, come on, we're, they're giving us everything. They're giving us everything we asked for and more. I'm excited about this book, you guys. And it's only 330 pages long. I mean, hey. I wonder if it's a standalone. I'm not sure. So, okay, I love that it just says it's a grimoire and doesn't actually have the title on the naked book. I think that's really fun. It's definitely a vibe. The whole thing is. And then with the journal that they sent as well, the whole, th they said, you know who needs foil? All three of these things. Give them all foil. Okay, so let's learn. Let's take this opportunity. Let's have a moment to learn. So here you can, they included you can see the difference between their version and the original title cover. Very different. Honestly, that looks dope too, though. The Faux Book Journal is the second one of our 2023 collections. Featuring in-universe references, each journal will be sure to transport you to the different literary universe. This month's journal pays homage to the meaning and value of life in The Invisible Life of Ada LaRue and has been designed with love by Lichen and Lightenstone. Cool, apparently this is a collection, great. And then we have the fairy tale highlighters. Oh, I was right, the Howl's Moving Castle bag item is a reusable foldable shopping bag, so that's cool. 
And then we have the Sun Catcher, designed by Teresa Chen and inspired by Violet Made of Thorns. And then the Treasured Tomes pin is inspired by Spinning Silver. Let's read the inside cover. Shall we? Since fleeing the gilded halls of Evergarden for the muck-filled canals of the marshes, Marlo Briggs has made a name for herself as the best curse breaker in Caraza City. But no matter how many cases she solves, she is still haunted by the mystery of her mother's disappearance. When Adrius Falcrest, Marlo's old crush and scion of one of Caraza's most affluent spell-making families, asks her to help break a life-threatening curse, Marlo wants nothing to do with the boy who spurned her a year ago. But a new lead in her mother's case makes Marlo realize that the only way to get the answer she desperately seeks is to help Adrius and return to the Evergarden society, even if it means suffering through a fake love affair with him to avoid drawing suspicion from the conniving five families. As the investigation draws Marlo into a web of deadly secrets and powerful enemies, a shocking truth emerges. Adrius's curse and her mother's disappearance may just be clues to an even larger mystery. One that could unravel the very foundations of Karatza and magic itself. Well now, fake dating, conspiracy, curses. What isn't it giving you? Garden of the Curse, we got botanical, mystery, fantasy, whodunit, it sounds like. I think that sounds really fun. I And it sounds like it probably is just a one-off, so... A really good palette cleanser in between really long series. Really beautiful copy. I'm excited to have this on my shelf. I must say this owl crate box definitely is better, is better for in my opinion for me than the Illumicrate box for July was. It's just, it really is a winner for me. I love the highlighter, I love the sun catcher, the book is great. I mean, what's not to love? Next month's owl crate theme for August is through the seasons and it will feature the next doorway, wooden story doorway, which is a thing they're doing now. And the last one was a hobbit door and I love the Lord of the Rings. And so I was very sad because I wasn't subscribed to Owlcrate at the time that they released the box with that. So you live and you learn. Maybe someday I'll buy one on the internet because I'm sure someone out there is selling it, but today's not that day. But I am curious to see what other doorways because the hobbit door is really the only doorway that I could think of. Okay, so far so good. We're liking the Owl Crate more than the Aluma Crate this month, but hey, we all have our time to shine. Next up, we have my very first, because it is the very first, Owl Crate adult book only subscription. So let's get into this. I hope that this is just a beautiful copy of a exciting book release because I'm still not off of the fairy loot wait list for the adult book only subscription. So this is just gonna hopefully fill that um, aching in my soul. One can only dream. On top we have a card and it says, let the games begin. I will create July adult fantasy. Pop, pop. This month's book is Immortal Longings by Chloe Gong and it is in the box in plastic. So let's get that off. I knew that this book was going to be coming in this box and so it took everything in my power not to buy another copy of Immortal Longings just because I wanted to read it. Um, but now that I have it, I can read it sometime this month. Okay, here we are. Very different cover than the original, which I can put here. I really like it. I like that it's a complete redesign. I don't dislike the original cover, but I don't love it either. It's very meh for me. So I think that this is a lot more visually intriguing. Plus the color palette is really nice. It gives off kind of the, the tone more than um, the original cover does, I assume. I mean, I haven't read it yet, so I don't know how true that is. But then we have this really gorgeous, almost cerulean blue edges. And on the back, it says, there are no gods in this world, only kings and tyrants. Sweet. Nothing on this side. And then this is just black with the blue. No, nothing else going on here. And no end pages. Hmm. Hmm. No end pages. Okay, I'm back because it is pen signed. So I forgive them for a little bit of the lack of end papers or reversible dust jacket art um, or anything on the naked cover. So I think the biggest 
thing that we're taking away from this version is that it's a complete redesign on the dust jacket. We have the sprayed edges and it's a signed copy. So if that sounds like it's worth it to you, it sounds good to me too. I'm really happy with this version. I just wish there was a little more. I wish there's something here maybe, or you know, here maybe, like even a different color than just white would have been something, you know? I'm excited to read it. Do you wanna know what it's about? Sure, I'll tell you. So Chloe Gong has been featured in book boxes before because she wrote These Violent Delights and Our Foul Lady Fortune and, and those other type of YA fantasies. And this is her adult fantasy debut. So people have been chit chattering about it, anticipating it, looking forward to it. So I'm excited to read it. And apparently it's a retelling of Antony and Cleopatra, the Shakespeare play which I haven't read, so that means almost nothing to me. Something about a fiery collision of power plays, spilled blood, and romance amid a set of deadly games. Hey man, color me intrigued. So, I mean, it's the, fr it's the first one for Owl Crate's adult subscription. I'm proud of them for even having had the sprayed edges because I think they're the last book box to the game to get on the sprayed edges game which isn't necessary but I like it I really do like it and I do think that this cover is a lot prettier than the original cover so I'm really pleased that I have this one instead and that's all I have to say about that next up are some fairy loot special edition unboxings I'm 91% certain that that's what both of these are I'm but I'm 0% certain where the monthly box for fairy loot got up to. So your guess is as good as mine what's inside of these. I think I know what they are, but it psh, hands off, you know what I mean? I have no idea. They put this tape on top of regular tape. Like pick one tape. We got like a lot of bubble wrap, guys. They were not screwing around packing this. It's legend born. And the follow-up blood marked. Let's look at these. Okay, so this obviously isn't part of the regular subscription. You had to special order these. This is a very popular YA retelling of like an Arthurian legend kind of situation going on. Personally, I haven't read them, so I could be completely wrong, but it's gorgeous. I mean, come on. And then look at this edge. Amazing. And then on top, it's this nice red. It's picking up a little more orangey, but it's actually um, like a deep red. And then also on the bottom as well. Wow. On the back it says, when the shadows rise, so will the light. Whoa. Oh, what? <laughs> I kind of forgot what these are gonna look like, so I'm having just as much fun as you are. Um, nothing on the in, you know, that part. But here's the naked book. Holy cow. We got colors going on for days. I mean, I'm a little bit speechless. What? This tree better be really freaking important. Cause otherwise, what are we doing here? You know what I mean? Ooh, this guy has tattoos. Is that allowed? Yeah, okay. And then same character art for the other end pages. This is so pretty. I love naked books that are pretty. It's not signed, but that is okay. All right, let's check out our second one here. Okay, here's the cover again. Here's our spine. And then these have a sword instead of the tree. And instead of the red, we have the blue now on the top and the bottom. And I know sometimes um, sprayed edges can get like a little wonky or wiggly looking, just depending on how the printing goes, but mine are very, very straight. 10 out of 10. Good job. Okay, looks like we have our trio of trespassers once again on the end pages here. And the naked book has the sword going on. I mean, it's like the sword all around, just like the other one had um, the tree all around. And then it says, you know, Legendborn Cycle book two. These are so cool. I can't wait to read these. Oh, that's cool. The first one was um, dedicated to her mother. And the second one, oh, it's Tracy Dion, by the way. Um, the second one is dedicated to every black girl who was the first. That's nice. Cool. These are so pretty. I freaking love these book boxes, you guys. These special editions that book boxes do are just 
a gift unto society, you know? In this crazy messed up world, at least we have fancy books. We have quite the little stack going, but it's like really colorful at the mo. Very, whoa, look at all, look at all those edges. That's really fun. Okay, this is my, I swear to God, this is the last box, I think. I don't know if you could tell from the way I keep telling you that I'm excited, but I'm excited. So in this one, not only do we have the bubble wrap, but we also have backing peanuts. They were like, you know what? Just fill up the space. Which is good, fine, good, I'm glad. Um, thank you for getting me my books in a, in a safe and orderly fashion. <laughs> so you know how we just had a bunch of really colorful books? Get ready for... The emo goths. We're in town, buddy. Check it. So what do we have here, you might be asking yourself? Just the special edition Last Hours series that Fairy Loot put out. Some classic Cassandra Clare that needs to go on my shelf stat. This is the first, there, okay, so there's three of them, obviously, in the trilogy. A one, a two, and three. And if you're unfamiliar with the Shadowhunter Society or any of Cassandra Clare's works, I highly recommend you just go ahead and you Google that on your own time. I don't have time to explain that to you right now. But if you are familiar, then this is the trilogy that takes place after the Infernal Devices, but before the, like Mortal Instruments, Mortal Instruments. You know what I mean? If you, if you know, you know, you know? So the first one, Chain of Gold, has this sword thing going on, right? And once again, very straight, very well done edges. So they are naked books, they don't have any dust jackets on them, which again, I've said it once, I've said it twice, I'll say it for the third time this video. I love a good naked book, as long as it's cute. And unlike the Allocrate adult book, who even though they didn't have end papers, it was just white, they went ahead and put in this beautiful rose gold end page, which is so pretty. And then it has a digitally printed signature of Cassie, but it's in this cool like rune thing. And again, if you know, you know, and if you don't, find out. No one's stopping you but yourself. And then the second book has what looks to be a locket, I think, on the front. And then some moths on the side here. On the back it says, secrets consume even the truest love. Nice. And then on this inside end paper, we have this vibrant yellow. And again, the digital signature. And then finally, Chain of Thorns with this gorgeous metallic shine on the cover and probably the best spine, roses with a rune in the middle. I think that's so pretty. And then it says, can love survive the harshest truth? Guess we're gonna find out, eh? But the weird thing is that instead of just a flat colored end paper, we actually have character art design and papers in this one which like I'm not mad about but then why didn't you do it in one and two you know I, it seems like a strange choice to me and then my signature stamp got stamped twice and it looks weird but once again it's a digital signature and we knew it was a digital signature and so there's nothing to be mad about additionally I'm just really easy to please and then on the back we have the same character art and paper again. So arguably and obviously this is the prettiest one of all three, but as a set, I mean, who doesn't love an all black? Like that's so cool. And then up there on the shelf like this. The only problem I kind of have with them is that all the rest of my Shadowhunter books have dust jackets and are black already underneath. So they kind of look like they're missing dust jackets. It's not like the design was a surprise, I just felt like maybe it wouldn't feel so much like it was just a naked book missing its dust jacket. I thought maybe it would feel more like it, books that are meant to be like this. But it's still really pretty and I love the edges and I actually haven't read these ones yet. So I figured just start strong with the special edition of them and go from there. So I am reading I'm on City of Glass right now in my reread. I'll probably keep going with the next three in the original Mortal Instruments trilogy and then do... You know what? I'll do it in release date because that's the way that I liked it and that's how I read it the first time and the interconnectivity was really fun. So 
yeah, I'll do it that way and then I will read these ones. And then maybe I will suffer through the other ones that I didn't really like that much. Maybe I'll like them better on a second time around. Probably not. I'm doing the audiobooks this time around, so maybe that's better or different or something. Anyway, what a haul. The nice thing about opening all of your book boxes at the same time is that at the end, you get a big stack of books like this. And it's like, honey, look what came in the mail. <laughs> More books. And you know what? That's how I like it. So anyway, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for joining me on this unboxing journey. It really truly has been a journey getting here with the moving and the boxes and the getting the boxes from the old address or getting them delivered to the new address. So look forward to a moving vlog eventually perhaps. And then also I'll be doing a catch up with my uh, July wrap up and August TBR soon. So look forward to that. Thanks so much for being here. Like if you liked it, subscribe if you feel like it, and I'll see you next time. Bye! It's so much weirder knowing that somebody is listening to me doing this.